Ready? Hello and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels Video Game Music Podcast, episode 5-1. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. Break it down now. <laughs> I just wait for the little breakdown. Um, every week we get together, we listen to some great video game music, we talk about it, and we get down. I think, we got, I think we got some jams this week, actually. Which is always funny when we choose such bizarre topics as the one we went with this time. But, hey, it just goes to show you, doesn't matter what the game is. Right. Doesn't mean good music can't be found therein. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for Pernell's picks. He's got some interesting ones. I went all Super Famicom this week. Oh, this topic this week. It's a topic. It's a topic. It's board game games. Basically, board games that have been digitized. Doesn't have to be an authentic board game made digital, but if it does count, but if it exists, it counts. Yeah. Um, or a game that's played like a board game or an adaptation of a board game. I say I like your version of it way better. Yours is less <laughs> jumbled and blurbly. It's just that's just what it is. It's just <laughs> what it is. It is. Um, yeah, so it is. Oh, uh, if you're listening to this now, it means I have moved all of our files to a new server. There was like little to no hiccups. There shouldn't have been any. Um, there shouldn't have been any. It should have been completely transparent. Seamless. Seamless. I just we're just so good at what we do. Yes, we're good. We could be gooder, but we are goodest at what we good. That's right. Real good. That's right. Um, <laughs> What's good? <laughs> Got anything for the top of the show, Pernell? Uh, hard to say because I'm still doing my same old bit. Like, it's very rare that I get addicted to a game, but lo and behold, I'm still playing Shire and the Wanderer. And I am that much closer to finishing my Pokedex. I am less than fifty to go. Yes, I like I like getting this uh this this kind of report every every week on your Pokedex collection. So yeah, fifty fifty more? Yes, so less about, even fifty. About fifty more. A little under that actually. About fifty or an even fifty. No, no, even fifty. It's not I need fifty. <laughs> I need <It's> fifty. <laughs> <laughs> but slightly less than fifty. And out of well, you figured that it's out of seven hundred and something. No, that's 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 impressive. Oh yeah, it's the first time. Well, admittedly, there's a there's a friend, a couple of my friends in the East Coast Pokemon League have done a great deal of help, a great deal of helping me get to this point. Um, if it weren't for them. I'd probably be still staring at my 3DS like when I have some time, maybe I'll breed a few. But, eh, eh. You're like the um, the crazy cat lady of Pokemon. You go yeah. into your house and it's just Pokemon everywhere. <laughs> like, why does, it, why does it, it smell like Raichu in here, man? Uh, it's, it's the feed I've been giving them lately. It's just not t- settling well with the stomach, you know? Yeah, you gotta stop feeding them candy. That makes them stronger. Hey, rare candy gets the job done, all right? <laughs> if you got a better way to train your Pokemon, I'd like to hear it. They do work. They do actual physical labor, and they earn those muscles. Think I'm some kind of slave driver? Come no, on, no man, it's a gym. I love my Pokemon. I give them candy and give them TV. Why do you think they call them Poke? <laughs> you know, they just you got couch potato Pokemon. You can't have a house full of Snorlaxes. Oh, I sure do, and I got a muckle on slapped the girl to couch, just like dripping everywhere. And I got a got a shuckle that just kind of hangs out on the kitchen table. I got a Mankey in the closet and a Ma- and a Machamp. Hanging out in the bedroom, he's just working. He's working like a like a like a boxing bag, heavy bag. My champ. I don't think a box. I don't think a punching bag would last very long with a my <laughs> champ going at it. But hey, maybe you got one of those special heavily fortified bags. No, he's in the back. Actually, um, Geo dude's in the back flipping a tire like CrossFit style. <laughs> <laughs> I just pictured that there, just like a ge- <laughs> <laughs> dude. dude. Anyway, how about how about this? How about we listen to some awesome tunes? Because that's what the show is all about. I don't think I can comply to that. Okay. Um, oh, well, I'm sorry. One more thing on the top of the show. Ooh. Our friends over at Pixel Tunes Radio, um, if you're listening to this now, it's uh, about a week ago, they did an episode on the early, early works of Tim Fallen. And was it, it coincidental like that? That was abs- awesome. It was completely coincidental, but they, they did all pre NES music. Holy cow. It is so good. Like, when you realize how awesome he was before any of that and how young he was when he started, he was 15 years old. We have a pair of unintentional companion episodes. There. Anyway, check them out. It's super informative. It's got some amazing sounding music because of the, the hardware that he was using. 
and what he was doing with it was incredible. So Pixel Tunes Radio, Ed and Mike, they're awesome people. Check them out. Definitely, because you'll get great music. And hey, nothing hurts to have a side of good personality to go with your music, right? Yeah, and they're way smarter than we are. Like, they actually, hey, 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 let's they, not sell ourselves <laughs> short here. They, you come away with information and not with like Robin Pernell, like, recalling Back to the Future movies. Hey, that's information. Maybe they don't know how Marty got away from no. Biff Tannen's, you know, great, 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 what better way to start off an episode about playing board games with your friends than choosing a song from a game that kills friendships? And <laughs> you might be thinking Mario Party. You'd of almost them. be right. But this one is even harsher. And it's go Dokapon Kingdom. Um, the track that I went with, also fitting for this theme, is called 14 Days of Darkness. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Let her rip. Welcome back. You're listening to 14 Days of Darkness from the game Dokapon Kingdom, written and composed by Shigeki Hayashi. Uh huh. Yes. Now, I admit this doesn't sound like what I would typically pick. This sounds like a war march. It may as well be. Yeah, uh, it's, it's got like that kind of, um, you know, the trolls are marching into the forest to wipe out the um, squirrels. Yeah, it's like, it's fitting for the moment it plays. Like, the game, without going into too many specifics, it's a game where you are a bunch of knights. It's a role-playing board game. Yeah, the and, artwork's super cute. Oh, it's, yeah, it's so it's so belies what it actually is. <laughs> um, basically, it's a game where you are a group of knights who are on a quest to save the kingdom from a big bad monster. And the winner, the person who does slay the king, gets the princess's hand in marriage. And... Uh, it's a lot of competition that takes place, but to wrap up to the point where we're referring to here, if you're doing, the game changes course very often. And if you get to the point where you're doing exceptionally bad at the game for a certain number of turns, okay. there's a place you can go on the map where you offer up your soul. <laughs> and when That's... you do, you become a demon. Oh, and for, I think it is actually about 14 turns. Your entire purpose is to screw everybody else over. All of your dice rolls involve oh, bad things to happen to so everyone else. It's funny what you, what you described sounded like kind of like an RPG, but this is like a board game. It's a board game. It's a, you're rolling dice and moving around a, a board. Yeah, it's a spinner, like the game of life. How is a spinner? Oh, no, it's actually a spinner. And so, at this point, like you're not doing good. You become an evil demon attacking the other players. Yep. So, like, it could be a thing where it's like when you spin the die. Or spin the spinner, it'll stop and say, like, every player gets cursed this turn with half attack power, or they all can only move one space, or they just start dropping money for how many spaces they go. <laughs> it's just the entire point of being a Darkling is to say, 
you already lost. So how about just screwing everybody else over while you're going your way out the door? I really like that. And it really can turn the game around. It's amazing, like, just how cruel this game can be. You can write on people's character and change their character's name. So, like, walk into a town, like, welcome, <laughs> buttface, how you doing? You know, it's like, it's just... It's very oh, well funny. put together to screw with friends. The only downside is it takes a long time to play, like Monopoly. I've a lot of these these games too. Um, I, I think one of your next picks, I've played like an entire night and never finished. Oh yeah, uh, but we'll <laughs> we'll get into that. Uh, my next, uh, my first pick is actually really similar in style, um, but completely different. In <laughs> <laughs> similar, but in what's different. Going now this is. Um, it's called Eugen No Furdy Furdy Girls for the Super Famicom. And again, it's kind of darker. It's a little slower. Um, it's, it's a board game for the Super Famicom. It's called End of Game. And I hope you enjoy it. End of Game. <laughs> This is the end of game music from the game Yujin no Foodie Foodie Girls for the Super Famicom by T. Hagiwara. Um, so this is also a board game game in that um, you are training. You're, you're like these cute little anime bunny girls going around the board game, but it's similar to the other game in that like you're leveling up and you're picking up weapons and stuff to fight a monster at the end of it. Oh, so it's not monsters throughout the game and whatnot. Is it a? Is it just like a, a structured Monopoly style board with one path? Yeah, I, I, I think it. I couldn't find a whole lot of playthrough of it, but that's that's how it's described. So it's like one path, and you're going through it. Um, I guess with other players who are also other magical bunny girls to, oh. to do it. So the the game is titled um, what's it called? Yujin no Furi Furi Girls, and Yujin is actually um, an anime artist famous for certain adult themed anime no adult themes are featured in this game and yeah this game is just cute little anime girls but you would imagine what would have been so that's this game and um <laughs> I, the, the soundtrack is really cool it's got that cool mellow again that cool mellow um super nintendo sound that i like a lot and i really like this this ending theme it sounded like a like the end of an 80s action movie you know <laughs> you're flying like, like the, the the hero flies away in a helicopter smoking a cigarette and he's thinking about the person he left behind ha! <laughs> ah, Hans will be the bad guy <laughs> Hans one so, scoey there we go scoey <laughs> <laughs> hey scoey you are one day from retirement scoey that is my most god awful Rainier Wolf Castle that I've ever that's done. That's fine. That's, I like it. You can do Rainier Wolf, ca Worf, Worf Castle. Worf Castle. <laughs> if he were a sailor, he's Worf Castle. He has no honor. <laughs> Rainier Wolf Castle. All Someone right. draw that. <laughs> All right. So um, why don't we move on to Pernell track number two. Moving across the board. Kicking it with my continuous stream of friendship ruining games. Yes. I'm going to go with my next pick, which is the all time original friendship ruining board <laughs> game Monopoly. Wait. Monopoly. <laughs> Monopoly. And the track is called, to the best of my knowledge, Flip of a Coin. Right. And we should um, preface this there's a lot of Monopoly games. This is. For the PC, um, released in 1995. By Westwood Studios.
Listening to Monopoly. The track is called Flip of a Coin and is written and composed by Oh Frank Kaplacki in uh, the 1995 PC version of Monopoly. A spectacular, spectacular piece of game, I have to say. A very cool track. It, it's the perfect track to listen to when you're putting your friends out of house and home, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is the kind of track where when it would come onto the game, I would feel compelled to get my dance on and my power moves in. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Because it was time to shake down a few buddies, buy myself a nice couple <laughs> of hotels, bring all my friends by, and hey, hey, right down the BNO railroad. Do you remember like it was like four? Was that four years ago? Like we we started, we got in a, we were getting a, we we're getting into board games, but we were playing. We would just try to play Monopoly. It was just like the one person would just take off winning, and then that would be the end of it. Yeah, pretty. I'll change. I'll stop doing the voice now. That's no, fine. But yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah, that was that was the problem. Like Monopoly, by its nature, is such an awesome game, but it needed to evolve with the times. And honestly, yeah, it never it, really it did. Never really did. They, they the rules have changed. Like they added some rules to speed the game up to make it a little bit more. I watched a whole documentary on Netflix about professional Monopoly players. It's all. It's all about um I think it's like I'm trying to remember like ratio from yeah. percent odds of landing on spaces yeah, and what properties to shoot for. And then just getting lucky, I guess, in the end. But um, I, I remember playing a lot of Monopoly, I think it was on the NES with my brother and my sister, and there were rules in the game that I had never played with before. Like um if someone lands on a spot on a property that's not that hasn't been bought by anyone. Ah, it goes up for auction. The auction rule, yeah, that's the game. And that's so the- someone's always picking it up. It was real, and so we started using that in our normal play. The funny thing about it, and it's funny you say that because this is a fact, bona fide fact. That is exactly how the game's supposed to be played, but no one ever did it. Really? Yes. That's and actually, if you read the rules right now, that's how the game works. I know there's variants. There's one variant where like you actually shuffle all of the properties and you just deal them all out, and, and so everyone owns property at the very start of the game. Yeah, that's a variant. Free parking is a variant, but the actual auctioning of properties when someone doesn't buy it after landing on it—that's an actual cement rule. That's so, so cool. So to not do that is actually playing by an unknown house rule. So like someone lands on boardwalk and they don't want to buy it or they can't buy it, Something it goes up to auction and. Yeah, this, I thought that was the coolest thing, and we got really, really heated into it. We spent a lot of hours in front of the TV playing Monopoly, and my family, we, we every every Christmas, um, as all the kids, all the cousins, we'd all get together and play Monopoly like over and over and over and over again. Such a good series. Yeah, of yeah games. I have a lot of fun memories. But no, the, the computer version. There's so many computer versions of this game. So what did you what did you like so much about this version? Well, for one, it was the first version I bought that allowed for. I wanted. I don't want. Oh, I had on. I, I don't know if I had online play, but it had great music. Yeah, Ninety five. I don't. I don't know. And I think I don't think it had online, but it had competent computer opponents. Competent, quote unquote. Uh, great music. Graphically, it was nice. Probably got it for cheap. And uh, honestly, that may well be it because before that it was just I had the NES Monopoly. No, I had the SNES Monopoly, and 
it was lacking something, you know, like I, the PC versions, like maybe it'd been smoother, or maybe the AI would have been smarter than the SNES's AI because both versions of the game, though SNES more so than the PC, you could really game the system to yeah, like give yeah. you all kinds of money. Like as long as it can get a monopoly, the compu- as long as the computer can get a monopoly, you can bank bankrupt them <laughs> just on selling it to them. Yeah. So because because they'll because they'll do it. Yeah, they'll do it. You take all their <laughs> yeah. money to use to build up your empire while they're sitting there broke with Baltic and Mediterranean. But uh, I will say this because I didn't choose a track from it for the show. Um, one game out there that's out there that did prove to be a nice evolution of the Monopoly formula is called Fortune Street. It got released, it got, it's a number of releases in Japan, but we got one version of it here in America from the Nintendo Wii that few talk about, but I wish they did. Huh. It's basically Dragon Quest and Mario characters walking around a board that has multiple paths right. and Monopoly style development. So oh, that's like, cool. It's an awesome, awesome game. Lengthy matches, mind you, <laughs> as Monopoly would be, but it's so fun. And the single player campaign is also pretty fun. What system was that again? Nintendo Wii. On the Wii. We'll have to play it sometime. Yeah, we'll have to. I, I, I've played very, very few um, Wii games. Oh, oh, yeah, I got a plethora of them. This is one <laughs> that you'll have to try. So, All right, so we're going to stick with the, um, the Monopoly-styled uh, games. And my next game is another very Japanese game. It's Super Okuman Shoja Game, The Game of Billionaire. It's I don't the, even know anymore. It's for the Super Famicom. It's by Yasuhiro Kawasaki and Masato Miyamoto. And this track is called Commendation. And I hope you enjoy it. Listening to Commendation from the game Super Okuman Shoja Game, the Game of Billionaire. I just love that title. The Game, <laughs> the game of Billionaire. billionaire. Singular. <laughs> Singular yeah. There's only one billionaire at the end of this game. It's for the Super Famicom by Yasuhiro Kawasaki and Masato Miyamoto. Um, so this is again, it's like it's like a Monopoly style game where you're going around a board uh, buying up properties, but the properties are like places and times around the world and around the country. So there's like a Edo period Japan. There's a Neo Tokyo that you can purchase, um, and, and they all have different themes. And, and the themes are really like, cool. And so I, I'm imagining like this part, this music plays like after maybe you earn some kind of power up. And what I'm imagining is like after you earn the power up, Pernell's going, "I'm beating you. I'm winning. I would sing that. I'm winning. <laughs> I'm gonna take you out of your misery." That's actually the reason I picked this track. Because I'm imagining you, like, singing and pissing everyone off. I'm <laughs> well, going to take all the money and spend it on lots of cake and ice cream. That's what I do, because oh. I'm billionaire. The billionaire. But, <laughs> but, like, I just love the fact that this music is so happy and catchy, even though I'm pretty sure the premise of the game is just to make all of your friends detest you. Oh, it's, yeah, it's... It makes it for always the, happen, and it probably like goes on for hours and hours and hours and hours. It makes for the best juxtaposition. <laughs> it's, just, it's like I want to, I want to kill you, but I can't. There are so many board game games in Japan um, for for the Super Famicom. There's so many of them, and I wish we got more of them here. I think I we guess, got cheated. I feel like I feel like they they just didn't take off out here. We got we had a few. Remember like Snake Rattle and Roll? That and was a board games? game. I'm pretty sure it was, and. Um, 
but like then of course there was all of like the Hasbro titles that came out. And, oh yeah, but they, they, they almost come. They're like they're like, hey, so your grandma wants a game. <laughs> They have Trivial Pursuit yeah, but on aside, the NES. Exactly. But aside from Monopoly so far, we've picked all like actual like games just in the style of a board game. Actually, I kind of like that in this way. Too, I mean, I thought about picking, like, say, Scrabble. Because I, Scrabble, I had Scrabble on the PS1 back in the day. And that had some good music, mind you. Um, of course, we know of Clue is a thing out there. Right. But um, I thought it maybe I was finding them. I was like, maybe I should try to pick games like board games that really couldn't really work as an actual board game or it could but it would be very complicated and yeah. like jump cumbersome like imagine playing dokapon as an actual board game it it would be messy yeah so it's cool that they they're more imaginative and they're like okay since it's good since it's going to be really difficult to do um, in real world, this is how you would do it. And also, it would be cheaper to produce. You know, uh, you're just producing a disc and not like a box full of little pieces. And minis things. and stuff. Here's Although, a that's fun too. Board I mean, game. we love doing that. Yeah, I mean, but that's... look how expensive Super Dungeon Explorer is $100, and that's yeah. if you get it on sale, probably. And you too. gotta have friends to play it with, and you gotta pay for that. Yeah, they are. <laughs> friends are expensive, man. Especially to play board games. They don't wanna pay, they don't wanna come over for that. And you gotta get them on the podcast. Yeah, you know how it... listeners, how much I'm paying Purnell just to be here today? There's a lot of LaCroix going down my gullet to be here. (laughs) A lot of LaCroix. I don't drink cheap. (laughs) Yeah. Just saying. A lot of water. A lot of LaCroix. (laughs) That's how I attract the Purnell to the the podcast. A wild Purnell appears with his passion fruit (laughs) LaCroix. But we should probably mosey on because otherwise people will be like, man, there's going to be... They're not going to know how to handle themselves when they get to our next, you know, soul-crushing track. I'm actually really excited about your next track because um, I didn't know that you knew about it. I'm not surprised that you knew about it, but I, I really enjoyed this one. So, oh, man, I get down with my games, you know. Yeah. This game is an often undiscussed or even heard of board game that got released in the United States for the PlayStation 1. This was during a period where, you know, a lot of companies were trying to cash on the fact that PS1 had a high sell rate and they wanted to look for cheap ports. And this happened to be a cheap port that was also pretty friggin' awesome. And this game goes by the name of Top Shop. And the track that I chose is simply called City. Enjoy. You're jamming out to the game Top Shop. Top that. Dude, I'm top oh. that. <laughs> that. Top is... that track. The top Shop. Top that. This track's called City from the game Top Shop. And it's, <laughs> we have no idea who composed this game because yeah. it came from one of those, like we were talking about it during the break. It came from one of those companies that was just dumping games over here overseas oh, yeah. from porting like, I wouldn't say they were cheap in Japan, Japanese games, but they were games that had cheap licensing costs. And just came over at the frat, like five and ten dollar price tags. Yeah, that, that's that's how it felt. Like um, there's a lot of like puzzle games, yeah, that were real cheap, like ten bucks. Um, and just finding this music on YouTube, where I feel like we're really lucky just to find it at all. Exactly, because the people who have played it, they they really loved it, or they, or they have or it's really memorable, and the music is awesome. Again, this is a lot like the Monopoly track, and it's kind of like a funky jam, but more on like the kind of new new jack swing, oh, like yeah. like kind of a. 
like 90s. Come to my like shop. Drum beat going. going to sell you some trinkets. Buy and tie us a cup of coffee or tea. Because so, yeah, so you could sell different things in your top shop. Right. This, this game takes the whole Monopoly style, like buying and selling property. So a whole new thing where you're like, you're, you own shops in the mall and you're purchasing goods and you're changing the goods out and you're trying to attract shoppers to your shop. There's there's so many little mechanics, but it made it so simple. Yes, I remember just do. like immediately like it's just clicking. Yeah, like the idea was like you bought the property, but the property wasn't what you made money on. It was you had to stock the shop. Right, right. And ultimately the way to make the money message you stock it with nothing but the most expensive things you can sell but early on you can't afford it so much so you might stock it with cheaper things and as people buy them out when they stop at your store you're like okay you bought the last five dollar doll now we only got a bunch of fifty dollar diamond encrusted yeah. teddy bears <laughs> and uh, you're playing multiplayer everyone's fighting for the different resources and everyone's fighting for the best property and the game would just go on for hours hours I remember we was at uh, ages ago. I mean, like long time ago. It was like at a friend's apartment, and we were there. We started at like eight, nine p.m. We didn't stop playing until maybe three or four in the morning, and we just we had to stop playing. We didn't. No one, no one won the game. <laughs> it's just part of the fun of saying we were just playing it to, to play it because it was fun. But we realized no one's ever gonna win. And sometimes that's awesome in its own right. It's like we had so much fun playing this never-ending game. It's like okay. We're going to call it at this time. Whoever has the most money at this point well, won the game. It was kind of double-edged because it was so much fun that we could play it for that long. But when we stopped, we were like, I never want to play this again because, <laughs> you know, there's no ending to it. Like, there's no winner. But it was it was a lot of fun. And it was it's really, really interesting in, in the way the, the mechanics worked. I think games like that would work best if they had a timer mechanic built into it. Yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe if the winning conditions were a little bit... A little bit tighter, like a little bit closer to like you having to earn so much money, but like you're just trying to knock other players out, like Monopoly style. And, and that's, that's what takes too long. So in Japan, this is called Tenant Wars, which I think is a really good title. <laughs> I agree. It makes you feel more in, it makes you feel more of a desire to play because it has an antagonistic vibe to it, as opposed to Top Shop, where it's like, I hope I have the best store. Yes. Tenant <laughs> Wars says, I'm going to ruin you. <laughs> Actually, I think I might, I might use this artwork for the uh, for the show because the, the American artwork is like it's just the top of it it doesn't even say the title of the game it just says board game <laughs> <laughs> but the japanese artwork has like a crazy cat and the cat's got goggles on and he's surrounded by all these weird characters the frog prince kid and a lady with a blazer yeah there's the frog prince lady right there it's so cool it's just random woman with blazers like <laughs> and then like it's like a weird like vegas like pimp <laughs> I don't know, yeah, but the cat is just bizarre. So maybe the cat is like, I own the mall and I own all of you. <laughs> oh no, he's also trying to shop too. He's also trying to buy oh, for Top Shop. Yeah, that was a cool game. It is a cool track. I, I really, really have liked your pick so far today. Thank you. That's what I have to say the same for you, good sir. All right, so we have excellent taste in music. So my final game pick is our yeah final one. This is from the game Heisei Gunjin Shogi. This is a uh, shogi game, which is kind of like a Japanese chess, and maybe people will... Tiles. Tiles. It's tile-based, yeah. It, but it's kind of an adventure-style game in which you're going... Um, you're trying to earn respect or earn money um, going from place to, like, place to place, and like... You oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold it for the for the track. Let it loop while you explain it. Oh, yeah. It's really... it's Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let the track play. This, this is called... Um, the level is called Japanese Spa, and it's um, for the Super Famicom, so enjoy.
welcome back. You're listening to Japanese Spa from the game Heisei Gunjin Shogi for the Super Famicom by Yoshiaki Hirasawa. Um, again, this is a uh, shogi game that takes place across like all these different locations. So, like, you play uh, shogi at a pool. This is at a spa. You play shogi in a school. You play you play shogi on a soccer field. It's kind of funny, too, because this doesn't sound like a track you'd expect to hear at a, sh- at a spa, regardless well, of what you're doing there. That's what's so funny to me. It's like, I'm imagining, like, the two characters are, like, are fighting. They're like, oh, I don't like you. Oh, I don't like you either. I can beat you at Shogi. Okay. But, like, they're, they're in the middle of, like, a, a spa. Or, like, I guess this would be, like, a... Like a like a hot spring type type like like maybe Japanese bath. See, I just house, <laughs> and they're just like playing shogi. <laughs> they're just sitting there, just and this music in the background is so intense and like epic, and and uh, and they're just pushing tiles across the board. <laughs> See, I actually had a similar idea where it's like it was like where like everyone's just kind of laid back and relaxed, like nothing's going on. It's like calming music playing. And then suddenly the hero of the game bursts into the spa, <laughs> and it turns out one of the people in the spa relaxing is like the leader of like a uh, yakuza gang or something. Oh, I like and he's like, guy, I yeah. challenge you to show me to save my family's honor. So Don says, and the guy's like, like, Oh, you walk into my spa and you challenge me to some shogi, and the music stops, and then this starts playing. Exactly. Yeah. Don't don't. And then, like, then like the guy's lackey just runs out with a shogi board and slams it down <laughs> at his party time because it's shogi go. Oh man! For my family's honor, I shall not fail. Mega shogi panel tile strike, <laughs> flaming shogi tile tosser. Oh, I have lost, and the losing the, the losing opponent is not allowed in the spa ever again for three weeks. For at least three weeks. <laughs> no, banned for life. For three weeks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anyway, I really like the, uh, it's kind of fun. It, it's got like a Power Rangers kind of feel to it. Like if the Power Rangers video game. Hey, oh, now, I'm sorry, you caught me in the middle of a, a pose. The moment you went Power Rangers, I was like, Sentai pose, immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta do it. But yes, I could see that. Now I want to play Power Rangers. Gum it. That was a good game, too. Yeah, we'll have to do an episode about Sentai games. Be- Not hentai games. <laughs> sentai games. I, I, I think I think we got the closest we would with my my last pick. <laughs> it's ready. We're gonna okay. have to do it. All right, I'm gonna pull this track down all the way down. Way down. Oh, we're just doing board game games, but you're not gonna escape the bonus round. Bonus round. <laughs> The bonus round is the part of the show where we pick remixes and covers based on today's topic. And today's topic was board games. And can you believe there are people out there that remix these things? Uh, There's a lot of great, great pieces of music. Um, Of course, I think there's some obvious choices. There's some not so obvious choices. And you'd be surprised what people get into. And that's what surprised me the most. Because, like, yeah, we agree that there's some awesome choices. You heard some yourselves, audience. But... When you think of the remix audience, the, the remix base out there, oh right, right, it's I feel like you think of like Metroid, Zelda, Undertale, like a lot, a lot of that stuff. Yeah, so to find out that somebody else he said, "Hey, I'm going to remix a track from <laughs> this game," well, we'll let you guys hear when we get to them. So yeah. let's get this party started. Who was first? You are, man. All right. Yeah. You well, said you get this party started. I'm like, this is a good segue. Here yes, it comes. That's right. <laughs> Because you come on, guys, video board game episode. There is no way that I could have gotten away with not going with a game, a track from the Mario Party series. And hey, someone remixed that jam. So slapping it out there, found a remix from Mario Party 2, the Horrorland stage. And the remixer in question goes by the name of Neku. Let's throw it down.
we're back. That was the Horrorland remix from Mario Party 2 by the artist Neku. I'm sorry, guys, but I, 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 I subjected Rob to it because I didn't want to put you guys through it. I just gushed for <laughs> a whopping four minutes or so about how awesome Mario Party is and the changes between the games and yeah, mercy. I don't have a whole lot. Like I, I like Mario Party. I, we played a, I think the most I ever played was on the DS because of like the cart sharing, like the... Uh, Mario Party, Party Advance, yeah, Mario three Party. or DS for the DS, yeah. Like one thing I got to say about Mario Party, I know we don't usually talk during the, after remixes, but my friend circle, I'm pretty notorious for always winning at Mario Party. <laughs> like Mario Party is a game heavily luck based, heavily luck based, but yet somehow I developed the reputation for just winning. And it stems heavily from the stars, yeah. like the bonus stars at the end. So, like, the big joke became that there were stars tailored just to me. Like, the, <laughs> hey, there's the black guy star. Or there's the guy who's over six foot star. Yep, there's the star for the guy with the biggest shoes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The big, big lack of oh, hair yeah. star. That's funny. Like, the last episode we talked about how you would be that guy in Bomberman and now you're that guy in Mario Party. <laughs> <laughs> but it never is like just sort of the same reason I think though. People would just zone in on like everyone take out for now. It's like, okay, oh, well yeah. now that you're all fighting to hurt me, yeah. I'm gonna take advantage of that somehow <laughs> to let you guys stumble on your own mistakes and ultimately win the game. Well now there's another style of game that's a party game that we've gotten into with games like Snake Ooh. Oil Ooh. and like you know the cards against humanity type stuff. I love those games. Another type of party game is Pictionary. Oh, you, you didn't go Pictionary, did you? I went Pictionary. So this is a very famous uh, track. This is Drawing Game from Pictionary for the NES. The original composer is the one and only Tim Fallen. And there's lots of cool remixes and mashups out there. I even have my own mashup on my SoundCloud, uh, Press Start to Continue. Um, it's a mashup of Jay-Z and Tim <laughs> Fallen. And it, it works amazingly well. And it's for Pictionary? For Pictionary. So this is... Um, by uh, this is produced by DJ Cutman, and it is Mega Ran featuring Adam Warrock. Uh, yeah, yeah. Adam, I made a face just now. Yeah, so it's DJ Cutman featuring Mega Ran featuring Adam Warrock, and it's called Pump It Up, the Pictionary Remix. And can you dig it? <laughs> yes, I can. Let's go. Me and Warrock keep it moving like the floor's hot. Don't quit your day job. You might get a tour slot. See those dudes rolling up, we don't move. Man, the flow's crazy. 302. Foolish. Walker Lewis, cause he don't lose. Skills don't equal murders, the kilos move. Guess I'm stating the obvious. He probably is. Since 07, been foot in the net like a tsunami hit. So put your hand up. Turn it to a fist. Tip the other hand, clamp it around your wrist. And charge up and blast on a wannabe. The White Howard in the post, cause it's foolish to front on me. Oh, talk to the cocky and ramen, they never take a day off. Not even bank holidays. So what you got is a problem, I'm telling y'all. The blue bomber and the man with the yellow scar. You got the sickness, we're bringing the cure. You bust it out of your speakers until it's shaking the floor. Oh, yeah. Cause I'm focused more than ever before. You know we ready for war, we gotta settle the score. Oh, yeah. You got the sickness, we're bringing the cure. You bust it out of your speakers until it's shaking the floor. Oh, yeah. Cause I'm focused more than ever before You know we ready for war We gotta settle the school Welcome to man To your mega ran Came to lend a hand Adam is ready and willing To fight the villain it seems that machines Is failing Society needs saving You feeling good ran So when Wiley approaches light If Proto Man joins the fight Then there's nothing they can't do To stop this plight It's like random and war rock You're loving the sound We make you throw your hands up And wave them around Cause I'm feeding off your energy Battling back the enemies Knowing I got the tendency To rock this stage And I'm seeking Remedy make a ran in the meantime. Got the six skills enough to beat this game. Yeah, that's our cause, and we standing on the platform while listeners ask for me to rap more. So, man, if I'm so amazing, jeez, must be why make a ran got me on this beat. You got the sickness, we're bringing the cure. You bust it out of your speakers until it's shaking the floor. Focus more than ever before. You know we ready for war. We gotta settle the score. Oh, yeah. You got the sickness, we're bringing the cure. We bust it out of your speakers until it's shaking the floor. Oh, yeah. Cause I'm focused more than ever before. You know we ready for war. We gotta settle the score. Hey, yo, up, Stop the track for a second. Gotta reset my game. Back it up for a second. Cause it feels like I died like a million times trying to get through the level. It's like you're reading my mind because I struggle to find the combination of lines that with the beat. Sometimes you know it's harder to find. So when you call me back to fight right along it's just side happy to take up the cause so haters they better hide yeah 
Got the elixir, the fixture, the spine twister. It's going down. Like the Catalina wine mixer. We rock steady, they bury like Scott Levy. I say that you not ready. I'm from where they chop Chevy. Let's pop them like bad checks. Comic kind of mag fest. Mad fresh. But in these rounds can cure bad breath. Halitosis? SB, I'll let go with focus. Stop it, something this explosive. It's, it's hopeless. hopeless. You got the sickness, we're bringing the cure. We bust it out of your speakers until it's shaking the floor. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. That was Pump It Up, the Pictionary remix, by uh, produced by DJ Cutman, featuring Mega Ran, featuring Adam Warrock. Um, yeah, I hope you like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm always super impressed with his like lyrical style, first of all. I think his voice is awesome. Yes, it and is. And he's rapping about, like, this one was clearly just all mostly about just Mega Man. And but like he doesn't just throw in just like with the words like he doesn't just throw in like calling it oh hey metal man such so, so, so. I'm a name he, is metal man he, like he yeah he's he's really really clever about like what he's saying and how he uses it I I he's just you can tell he's just having a ton of fun it's friggin' phenomenal really, man really great and quite frankly I'm throwing this out there I don't think I'm not feel ever hear our show but if he does I've seen you at Mag before Magfest. Put this track up. If you can, <laughs> DJ Cutman shows up there half the time. You're there half the time. Do this track. Yeah, yeah. This is good. Yeah, I'm probably going to get up on his Facebook, could be a, be a Facebook and be like, yo, this track was amazing. Yes. Yeah. I, I, God, I would love to hear this track. He comes back it. to Philly and plays around some clubs every once in a while. So oh, tr- shoot. Yeah. He tours. True. He tours all the time. Well, next time he's in Philly, we got to hit up there. So, um, yeah, for more information on the artists on today's uh, bonus round part of the show, check out the website, Rhythm and Pixels, <coughs> rhythmandpixels.com. We'll have uh, links to their Facebooks and SoundClouds. And in the case of Meg Rand, to his uh, website where you can check out his tour dates. And I'll have links to Adam Warrock and DJ Cutman, too, just so you can get to all of that. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you here. Thank you for having me, Groovy Dude. <laughs> this has been episode 5 1, season 5 of Rhythm and Pixels. Keep on trucking. So Keep on jamming. Focus on board game games. <laughs> I just like, like saying that. Board game games. Board games. Actually, games. Um, no one remembers brain games. Oh, I remember brain games? Yeah, that was me joking about it. <laughs> there was actually a new Brain Games on... I mean, it's not the same thing, but there's a similar Brain Games on Netflix right now. Really? Yeah, I think they remade it for, like, on Disney or something. Why don't you look that up? Check that out. It wasn't as exciting. Oh. Yeah, I know. I hope you enjoy your holiday for American listeners. Um, happy Labor Day. I hope you enjoy your uh, your day off. If, if you have if you have your day off, please enjoy it. And those who are international listeners, happy Monday! And also, it's uh, kind of technically... Yeah, happy Monday. It's also kind of like the last day of summer too. Yeah, unless I haven't even, I realized that all this, this entire summer I haven't eaten crabs yet. I haven't gone to the beach at all. And I summer. haven't gone to the beach oh, yet. Wow. It makes yeah, for those sad. of us like yeah, on the East Coast, like you know, you kind of get to the beach like once. Yeah, because it's not it's not hard to reach. Like <laughs> I could probably jog there. Well, not jog, not jog, but I could drive in a reasonable amount of time. Very reasonable amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> so then that's, jog. This is good beach music right now, actually. Mm. And it got me thinking about it. but crabs crabs I don't know if you do crabs I don't, I, don't, I don't like crabs oh, no. I know I know <laughs> I want to eat crabs <laughs> so bad I miss them alright <laughs> I don't want crabs now oh god oh oh uh, yeah I don't I don't I don't do crabs don't do crabs at all mercy I don't like them um so that's all something about me, everybody. Don't don't like craps. Vegetarian. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's all I've got. This is Epin episode five dash one. I hope you enjoyed it. But for more information on the show, yeah, you know, check out the website. Rhythmandpixels.com. And if you'd like to send us some suggestions, just send us a nice little note. If you want us to give you a shout out on the air, just just do you know, whatever. You know, say hi. Um, yeah, send us an email. Rhythm and pixels at hotmail.com. 
And I'm gonna do something new right here. I'm gonna say, if you wanna find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, find us on Instagram, it's just all rhythm and pixels. Nice and quicker, <laughs> it gets it out. You can follow us there, you can follow us there, you can follow us there, it's all, it's all good. It's all follow, rhythm follow pixels. everywhere, let us all have a communication. Yeah, so yeah, Facebook, we have a lot, usually have a little, little lively discussion about some of the tunes. People usually have like some of their own suggestions. I love hearing new music. Twitter, there's lots of great artists on there who are always posting up some amazing music that I think we're going to focus on our next show. Mm. I think we talked to that person earlier. And then um, on Instagram, it's just, you know, pictures of me baking and my cat. Baking? <laughs> yeah, my, <laughs> my cat watching me bake. <laughs> no, no, no. He means his cat is actually baking. He's a, a very talented cat. Very talented, very talented cat. It's a good cat. Yeah. I've I've had some of his I've had his like his veal parmesan, oh <laughs> superb man! You don't want to eat what he eats. That's disgusting. <laughs> well, well, he, well, he doesn't eat it. He just cooks it. And then um, yeah, and then um, also if you want to check out our uh, Patreon page, it's uh, patreoncom slash Um Yeah, so if you feel like doing that, that's cool. If not, don't worry about it. We're Sunshine. Just- Lollipops. And if you're listening to us on iTunes or Stitcher, or if you caught us on the webpage, you know, thanks a lot. There's, there should be some download links. You could download, listen to it anytime, anytime at all. <laughs> Please do. We want to hear from you guys. We want to talk with you guys because, quite frankly, we love talking about music and we like putting it out there. But Nothing is more fun than actually exchanging words with people who listen to what we're listening yeah, to. Yeah, let us know where you're from and what's what's what are you up to. Yeah, what you up to? What's your favorite pina colada is? Do you like do you like birthday cake? Are you fond of trolley gummies? No. The heck, man! I'm vegetarian, man. All right, gummy gel- gelatin. <laughs> right. Shoot, I didn't even think about that. Uh, anyway, that's fine. Um, I got nothing else. Um, I can tell you what our next episode might be. How about that? Ooh. Because we should probably figure that out. The next episode could be a special guest episode. Oh, man. That's the plan. Or another special guest episode. <laughs> We're going to have a special guest next week. I don't know who it's going to be yet. Depending on that guest, is going to be that episode. So um, maybe I'll, I'll write about it. Maybe I won't. That's my thing. And he's sticking to he's it. Sticking to it. And my name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. Thank you for listening to Rhythm and Pixels. And remember, video games have been quite the thing as of late. More people are playing video games than ever in history, recorded human history. Yeah. But let's not forget that board games are a thing out there. They do exist, and they are awesome for getting people together and just kind of interacting with each other in a way that, honestly, to me, video games doesn't quite replicate. Don't don't neglect board games because you might be missing out on some prime social time with those you care about. Just saying.